Welcome back to Fjordor. When I first survived 100 days on this map, it was a mere mod map, which has now transformed into one of the finest maps this game has ever seen. To mark the release of this map, I decided to return to it, with the goal being to beat all 7 bosses within 100 days, using only direwolves. If you aren't familiar with how this series works, I have 100 days to beat a said map with only the assistance of one specific creature. Before we do get into it, I want to thank you all so much for the recent support. Since my last video, we have now hit well over 10,000 subscribers, which all feels a bit surreal to me. Needless to say, if you do enjoy the video, please make sure to leave a like, and if you are new around here and like what you see, don't forget to subscribe to the channel with notifications on, so you don't miss an upload. Lastly, I do stream these challenges multiple times a week over on Twitch, so if you are into that some sort of thing, come give me a follow over there. Without any further ado, let's get into it. We began day one by waking on the cold beaches of this mysterious Scandinavian land. Straight away, I was cold, which was a fantastic start. So we began to harvest the essential early game items by punching trees for thatch and wood and picking bushes to get some fibre and berries. From there, I made myself a set of cloth armour. But it's safe to say that my first night on this strange land was met with a lot of death due to the cold. All this despite focusing fortitude heavily in my early levels. Eventually, I managed to get some standing torches down and I waited out the night as I camped out and toasted some marshmallows on my torches. As the morning dawned, I could finally step out from the torches and I immediately harvested these boxes and barrels which can be found all over the Fjordor beaches. These are a must in the early game as they give you metal tools, cooked meat and a variety of other goodies. With my new metal tools, I had some newfound confidence, so I prepared to take down an Argitavis to gather some hide. Only, this didn't quite go to plan. After not being able to spawn at the same spot for some reason, I decided to sacrifice my stuff, as these starter boxes were all over Fjordor, so it didn't take me long to get all my tools back anyway. After making sure I had all the basics again, I decided to make a raft, which I not only needed to get around on, but would also give me some nice early game XP. With the raft down, I then set my sights on making a refining forge, so I could cook some metal up while on the move. After unlocking the forge and making one, I placed it down on our raft, and started to cook the scrap metal, which you can get from the wooden boxes on the beach. I quickly made myself up a set of hide armour to help me survive the upcoming night, and then used the metal to make a smithy. With the smithy down, I had just hit level 35, which was just high enough for me to access this purple drop, and get myself an apprentice kite and helmet. We then set sail across the map, and for much of day 3, this is what I did, looking for nice easy areas to potentially tame a direwolf. Of course, I was on constant lookout for lead Sigfries, which I was convinced was about to ruin my day. On the afternoon of day 3, we finally arrived at the snow biome, where I attempted to look for our first direwolf. However, I didn't seem to be having much luck, although I did take down this Argy over here, which I gathered some nice hide from. It wasn't long before the night returned, and once again, I had to make a quick escape out of the snow biome, so I didn't freeze to death. I travelled through the night, and suddenly, I ended up in a crazy 5v5 mech battle. No, 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 not these mechs. I mean these mechs. That's right, guys. Today's video is sponsored by none other than Mech Arena. Join me in this fantastic PvP mech shooter game where you can battle it out with your friends or random players using deep combat tactics and limitless customization. This unique multiplayer battle game lets you choose from a wide range of mechs, skins, firearms, and with new pilots, the game gets a totally new depth of strategy and gameplay variety. Enjoy 12 completely unique pilots and choose your best combination of speed and firepower to fit your personality, playstyle, and your mechs. With plenty of mechs to choose from, discover a brand new mech called Orion with his amazing ability called the Hunter's Mark, which marks a target for you and your teammates to attack opponents causing a ton of damage. Starting Season 8 with a new Battle Pass, you can get your hands on some amazing new skins and win a brand new weapon called the Graviton Beam, which looks insane. So jump right in and download this free PvP game for Android and iOS using the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen right now to get one Firelight skin, one Prodigy Crate, and one plasma cannon to help kickstart your game. Also, you can add me to your friends list and play with me. And like, honestly, with a win record like that, who wouldn't want to get carried by Rampy? Getting back to it, the next morning I arrived on the west coast of the island, called Vardaland. I had been sent a spawn map by my Twitch chat, which had said Dyer will spawn near here. The only issue is that I would first need to scale this massive cliff. Before doing so, however, I would obviously need a full belly to do this, so I set up some meat to cook, and then unlocked grappling hooks. I wasn't too bad on stuff for grapples as I had been farming as I went along, but the main thing I needed was to craft some cementing paste, as I had a grand total of zero. After crafting the paste, I made up some grapples, as well as a parachute, which I would hopefully be using to return from the snow biome with. 
I could only make a total of six grapples, so this ascent up the cliff was rather nerve wracking. However, thanks to my pro grappling skills, I was able to make it up into the snow biome. In the snow biome, I spotted my first pack of wolves, and I was obviously so disgusted at their levels that I decided to yeet my torch off the cliff. After recovering the torch, making sure to avoid aggro in the nearby Daedons, I set up a camping station for the night, where I would just aim to survive through the night and wait for the slightly warmer conditions of the morning before going any further. As the morning struck, I felt a bit braver, and I ventured out into the snow. It didn't take me long to find a wolf pack, with the highest level 1 being level 100. It was hardly going to be my new breeder male, but honestly, after spending the first 6 days of this challenge on foot, I would just be happy to have any dino to ride at all. I did get a mini heart attack when this level 85 dialf almost made it up to say hello to me, but luckily I was ready with a bowler. After managing to land a bowler on the level 100, I ended up knocking him out pretty easily, and then just had to quickly deal with the last of his pack, who ran away, of course, at the mere sight of me. I tamed up the level 100. It was safe to say it was an extremely average direwolf, with its two best stats coming in oxygen and movement speed, which is better known as wasted points. Nevertheless, I did now have a wolf to ride, so I thought I would try him out a bit. We do. Right, let's just make sure we have enough stamina to get away from him. What happened to Gunpig? Yeah, we're not, we're not, we're not feeling Gunpig spoils. Right, let's, let's get him. Ow. Ow. Okay, we're fine. We're fine. Uh. No one saw that. We didn't almost just die. I don't know what you mean. After my experience with Megatheriums on my last 100 days on Scorched Earth, I was quite glad not to lose another creature to these beastly things, but nevertheless I retreated out of the snow biome, jumping off my wolf before I reached the bottom. With my first wolf, we then set sail again, as I looked for an easier route into the snow biome. After a little bit of parkour, I found just that, and we had found a path into the snow. After about 20 minutes of searching, I managed to find a level 140 direwolf with 26 points in melee, which would have been a pretty good start to our melee line. Unfortunately, this mammoth took him out before I even had the chance to knock him out, so we had to move on. Later that night, I managed to find myself another pack of wolves, which one of them was particularly interesting to me. The problem I was having when finding these packs was splitting them up, as packs of dire wolves do some serious damage, and I obviously didn't want to damage the ones that I wanted to tame also. However, after a bit of a struggle, I finally managed to get this 145 dire wolf with 26 health all on his own, and after a couple of bowlers and trank arrows, we had him knocked out. Things seemed to be looking up for once until I went off to look for some prime meat. Guys, guys, please tell me that he's not doing what I think he's doing. He's killing the wolf! No! Don't you dare finish it off! After that incident, it's safe to say that I took a break for the rest of the day, but we did return full of energy on day 7, and we soon spied a level 140 and 135 wolf. Sadly, both were extremely average stat-wise, but it would still represent a considerable upgrade on what we had at the moment. In the end, I opted to go for the 135, which I believed had marginally better stats, mainly looking at its 22 points into melee. When it finished taming, it came out pretty average, with its best stat being 34 points into stamina, so fittingly, I named her I Am So Average. I quickly brought our new wolf back to the raft, before collecting a nearby runestone, which gave my freshly tamed wolf some nice early levels. At the raft, I would have to make some more trank arrows before I could go any further, so I spent some joyless minutes picking berries by hand and crafting up some narcotics. Once that was done, I could return to the snow again, where I found a pack of direwolves on top of the blue obelisk. I had to take out the weak ones, but after doing that I managed to isolate this 150 female with 28 points in HP. Now 28 points is probably what I would recommend as a minimum pre tame stat in a regular playthrough, so I was quite excited to see how this one would turn out. I took down this Bronto with relative ease, which for some reason are now spawning in the snow biome, and got some nice prime meat for the wolf. I waited anxiously for her to tame up, and was extremely happy to see that our time had not been wasted this time, as we got 43 health. This would be our starting health stat. With the health wolf returned to the raft, I now just needed a melee line, and we could really get this challenge started. Luckily for me, I didn't actually have to wait that long, as I managed to find a 145 wolf with a whopping 31 points into melee. Upon tame, I would have been happy honestly with 42 points plus, but was extremely happy with 45 points. In comparison to the Mantis 100 days, we'd had some serious luck with starting stats, and I was looking forward to starting the mutations. It was now time to select a proper base location, 
and so for the first time on this challenge, I used the teleport feature which Fjordor has. I decided that I wanted to return to familiar territory, and if I was to have a large amount of diables, I would need plenty of breeding space. Thus, I opted for the same cave that I used when I played Fjordor for the first time, located on the eastern side of Vanarland. Upon returning to this familiar territory, I immediately set up some foundations and refining forges, as one of the best things about this cave is that it is filled to the brim with metal. In fact, it is so full of metal that even by the end of this challenge, there was still a huge supply of metal left in the cave. With some ingots collected, I made a smithy for the cave base, and then took a trip out to get some crystal and some obsidian from some of the nearby mountains. Back at base, I made a fabricator and placed it down, before starting to make the wolves. Sadly, both of the health and melee stats wear on females, so we had to first look at getting these stats onto a male. While I waited for the wolves to pop up, I looked at getting an egg incubator. Eggs, eggs, eggs. Yes, Ozzy, eggs, but also not eggs. Direwolves are of course mammals, which means of course they give birth to live young. However, the egg incubator in Ark can also be used for gestation dinos, which meant that for me, I wanted to get hold of one as soon as possible. Anyway, we managed to get the melee stat onto a male, and I also began to raise some 0-0 females, ready for some mutation breeding. While these wolves grew up back at base, I took the wolf army to kill an alpha raptor. Now, Fjordal has 7 bosses in total, and I will attempt to explain them as quickly as possible. Essentially, you first have to kill 3 world bosses, which are then used to summon the island bosses. To summon the world bosses, you need 30 rune stones per boss, so a total of 90 rune stones for all 3 bosses. During this challenge, I will attempt to beat all 3 world bosses, followed by all 3 island bosses on beta difficulty, and then the final unique boss to Fjordor, also on beta. Disposing of the Alpha Raptor meant that I had collected my first rune stones, but I still had some way to go. At base, the army of 00 wolves was continuing to grow, which was a good thing, as we were now on day 14. Fjordor was going to be my biggest challenge yet, so I really had to get a move on if I wanted to defeat all the bosses within 100 days. I continued to farm up metal and keep the forges running, and then made up some Trank Arrows, as I received some very interesting news. One of my Twitch subscribers had messaged me, telling me to go check out the Artifact of the Skylord Cave, as it was spawning very high level overpowered wolves, which were tameable. I thought that I had to check this out. Inside the cave, I was indeed immediately greeted by a level 270 direwolf. Whether these wolves were tameable or not was still the question, as the awesome spyglass isn't always the most accurate with these kinds of things. After kiting the 270 wolf outside of the cave, after a swift cheeky bowler, I began to knock the thing out. He did indeed have rather a lot of torpor, so after a few more bowlers and arrows, we did knock him out. Now, normally when creatures are untamable, you don't have the option to put meat in their inventory. So when I opened his inventory, I knew that the rumours were indeed true. At the time of editing this video, I believe that these wolves are still tameable, so who knows what wildcard have planned here. He ended up coming out with 60 points in HP and 58 in melee, which, while sounds great, for the level of bonus levels it got, it was actually pretty poor. So with this in mind, I went back into the cave where I spotted another 270 level wolf with 47 points into HP, something that seemed pretty good. After bowling and disposing of his mate over here, I began to trank the 270 out, and a short while later, he too fell unconscious. After putting some meat on his inventory and waiting through the night, the wolf turned up the next day with a huge 71 points into health. It's safe to say that this would be our health line going forward. With the new wolf secured, I teleported back to base, where I would make some narcotics, as I would used my entire supply taming the last two wolves. The next day on stream this time, I returned to the ice cave, eager to show my followers the cave, with its incredibly powerful and most importantly, tameable wolves. However, inside the cave, it, it seemed kind of dead, with no high level wolves of good stats spawning, so instead I returned to base and got myself a nice fresh trim. I was of course cutting my hair so I could make myself an S plus nanny, which uses human hair to craft. After this, I went looking for some alphas to farm runestones with, and after finding these two alpha raptors, it was time to put our wolves to work. Why do I feel like we might lose a wolf here? Oh dear. Uh, no, 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 not that one. Right, okay. Alpha raptor's dead. Right, both dead. And we got nine rune stones for two of them. All right, not too bad, not too bad. With the rune stones collected, I decided to end the day's stream with a return to the ice cave to see if any new wolves had spawned. Okay, what level were those wolves? Oh, it's 280. It's got 49 points in melee. Run! Okay, that's a 180. Let me bowl this one. 
Oh, sorry, by the way. Can we just admire those boulder skills? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get the 280. We're gonna get the 280. And uh, those boulder skills were slick. Right, right, run, run, run. We need to make more boulders. 49 points in melee. Not too bad at all. Okay. Uh oh. Okay. Uh. Easy. Easy. Right. Easy. Knock tight. After knocking out the 280 wolf with its unbelievable melee stats, we were forced to take out this 150 polar bear, which was blocking the entrance to the cave and also doing quite a lot of damage. I then did something very stupid. That's a Palovia. That is the biggest booby trap at the front of this cave I've ever seen. <laughs> right. I reckon, do we, do we bait him out? Do we bait him out? What map am I going to do next? Uh, Aberration. I was going to do Ab next. I reckon we try and bait this Palovia. Oh! Uh-oh. Please. Dire Wolf. Dire Wolf. So, after pulling a classic Rampy, I returned to the cave this time with a whole army of wolves, as I had seen a couple more Alpha Raptors for us to take out for more runestones. While the whole runestone process has the potential to be annoying, due to Fjordor being absolutely littered with Alpha creatures, I didn't want to find this unenjoyable or grindy. Returning to the cave, thankfully eventually the wolf had come to his sense and taken out the Palovia, and I managed to retrieve my stuff. The 280 wolf was also tamed as I passed it on the way in, and with my awesome spyglass retrieved, I could see that it had come out with 67 points into melee, which would now be my melee starting stat. With the wolf army, I teleported back to Vanarland and arrived back at base, where the first thing I did was to make the HP wolf with the 00 male wolf that I had, in order to get the HP stat onto a male. At first, however, I was having no luck with this whatsoever, as I kept getting the wrong gender or the wrong stats. While I waited for more to pop, I left for Lava Island, where I killed some mantis to get some polymer for an egg incubator. Only on the way back to base, I may have fallen down into the water and suddenly found myself face to face with an Alpha Carno. Uh oh. Nice Alpha Carno. Friendly Alpha Carno. Definitely doesn't want to kill me. Wants to kill me. We're in trouble. Can we take him out? Oh, we're so dead, aren't we? We are so dead. Uh. Uh. Wolf might be. Swim safety. It's all fine. Absolutely fine. Nothing to see here at all. Nothing to see. Um. Yep, yep, that's it. Yep, you run away. I, uh, yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm honestly so, so scary. But like, look at me. The, the Alpha Carlin just saw me and was like, nah, he's a bit scary. Him. Please tell me that's not an Alpha Raptor. No. No, no, not to, not to a pack of Raptors. Please, not to. A... Oh. This is the most humiliating thing to have ever happened. We survive an Alpha Carno and die to a pack of Raptors. After that mishap, at base I set the 67 melee male to breed with the 00 wolves as I looked for a melee mutation, before making myself an egg incubator with the polymer that I had gathered and then an electrical generator to power them. I then rather unsuccessfully attempted to extend our base, but I did manage to place both the generator and egg incubator down in the end. With the incubator down, I could now make the most of the gestation monitoring feature that it offered. Now, gestation monitoring lasts for 5 minutes each time, and it allows you to see the stats of the unborn. If you don't like what you see, you have the option to reset the gestation there and then, saving you a lot of waiting time. I can't quite stress how amazing this feature is, especially if you play on official or close to official settings, which have long gestation and cooldown timers. Using our gestation timer, we had some classic rampy luck, as when looking to get the 71 HP onto a male, I instead managed to get a mutation to 73 HP, which incidentally was also on a male. When it hatched, it had a lovely green tinge to it, so I named it Minty, after a member of my Twitch chat, which also fit the wolf perfectly. With Minty now growing up, 
I took a couple of wolves to deal with the Alpha Carno, which had caused the demise of one of our precious 00 wolves earlier, and we absolutely destroyed him this time, and it also dropped us a nice little 9 rune stones. Back at base, the mutation grind element of this challenge was well underway, and it wasn't long before we started to kick into gear. Your embryo starts. Mutation? Oh! Incredible. Incredible luck. I love wolves. Absolutely love them. So, with a melee mutation under our belt, we headed back off to the snow cave, and no, it wasn't to tame more wolves this time. This cave is actually home to the artifact of the Sky Lord, but to get to that artifact, you have to do some pretty nerve-wracking jumps over some death pits. Quite frankly, I'm not quite sure how possible this would be without grapples, and I didn't feel in the mood to die trying, so I came back to the cave prepared and grappled my way to the artifact, before returning to my wolf and teleporting back out of the cave. Back at my humble abode, I placed down a storage box and named it Boss, as I added the Sky Lord and all the runestones that we had collected so far. By now, Minty had finished growing up, so I started to mate him with the second set of zero zeros that I had bred. One of the most frustrating things about direwolves is how small their mating range is, meaning I had no choice but to cluster 10 of them around him in a circle in order to mate them all at once. As we approached day 30, the mutations came rolling in, and we got a health mutation to 75 and a second melee mutation to 71. As the two stats, I was glad the health was slightly higher, as direwolves not having a saddle certainly makes them on the squishy side, even with the pack buff. With the mutations claimed and raising, I had no time to waste on this map, so I set off in pursuit of our second artifact, located in the Redwood Cave. Artifact is left. Oh no. Uh oh. Oh, we, we messed up. We messed up. Oh, we messed up big time. I didn't realise it was like high level stuff in here. Is that a Megalania? Oh no. Why do I feel like these things can probably take me off? How many filers are in here? 190? I feel like I have not been warned properly about this cave. I'm feeling very scammed right now. Not enjoying... Ow. Not enjoying life. Not enjoying life at all. So, after somehow surviving the first section of this cave, I realised that I had to grapple up to the second section. Thankfully for me, there were no creatures in this massive open room, not even any piranhas in this pond, and we all know Wildcard never passes up the opportunity to add some piranha spawns in. Incredibly this time, they had done just that though, which allowed me to grapple up to the artifact of the strong. On a bit of a roll now, I continued caving, and went off to the Aberration Cave. When I had played Fjordor as a modded map, this cave had housed the artifact of the Skylord, something I hadn't quite realised now had moved, and even though I already had it back at base. What I did find, however, was the terminal to summon the Megapithecus, which was certainly useful information to have. And at base, the mutations just kept on rolling. Yeah, they're yummy. Oh, I don't know how you can... Oh my god. We are so good. We are honestly... We are so good. So good. This mutation look, this challenge, is honestly unbelievable. I have never seen anything like it. This is, this is incredible. Absolutely incredible. So, with a baby 77 male wolf raising, I attempted to make an S plus nanny, so that all of these mutation wolves would get the imprint buff, and would be usable down the line. A short trip to Asgard later to get some cementing paste from the beaver dams, and we had made ourselves the nanny we had been craving. I placed her down, and then kept the mutation hunt going, as we helped ourselves to another HP and melee mutation. If you aren't sure how I do my mutation guides, I would certainly recommend watching either of my last 100 days videos, as I explain in more depth how I do it there. On day 30, we left for Lava Island to get the Artifact of the Cunning. We had an interesting entrance to this cave, as I immediately contracted a nice dose of Mega Rabies, followed by realising that I was way too hot to survive in here for long. So, I left the cave and unlocked some Gilly Armour, and then bumped into a Mantis right outside of the cave, using his polymer to craft myself some Gilly. Returning to the cave, things seemed to be on the up, until I realised that I had a very large bat-like problem staring me right in the face. Master plan, again. Right, Rampy Rider Wolf. Go get him. Go. Go on. Get him, lad. He's taking his time, isn't he? Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, dear. Ah. There's quite a lot of these things in here. Um. Have I just sent Rampy Rider Wolf in to die?
Oh dear. Oh, he's been dropped. Go on, go on, lad, get in. Right, that one's, oh, he's, he's low, he's low. I might go in for the sneak attack. I'm going in. I'm, uh oh, got him, got him. No, get him. No, do not pick me, do not pick me. Please, Rampy, get him. Oh dear. Oh, we got him, we got him, we got him. I can't believe I literally just saw him, like, carrying my wolf off into the sunset. With the bats gone, an alpha plora broke my armor, and I suddenly found myself right at the artifact, but also dying very quickly. I just needed to place down a sleeping bag so that I could respawn with full health and get the artifact. He's ever encumbered, isn't he? Alright, fine, I guess Rampy's gonna have to die in the cave. The dung beetles are just struck. I've just... The dung beetles have just destroyed my sleeping bag. Right. Fine. Nothing to see here. Oh my god, I've just been killed by a dung beetle. I have just been killed by a dung beetle. So, after the most humiliating death of my arc and YouTube career, as well as of course the most entertaining moment for my stream chat, I returned to base and made up a ton of grapples, as I would attempt to go through this next cave on foot, with only the assistance of grapples and parachutes. I took Minty up towards the cave, before spotting it in the distance, and for some reason deciding that it would be quicker to parachute over. Clearly, I ended up feeling very bad at the last second, as I parachuted away I whistled Minty on follow, which I'm not really sure helped the poor lad's case. Anyway, perhaps we'll see him again someday. Arriving at the cave, I had to use my grapples to good effect, as we didn't want any accidents in the lava. This lava is pretty much instant kill lava, which makes it one of the more dangerous ones in Ark. Not that any are not dangerous though. To make it even more dangerous inside, the cave is full of bats, scorpions and snakes, so if I managed to get past the lava, that was really only half the job. After managing to grapple away from the bats, I reached where the artifact of the pack should have spawned, and found it wasn't actually there. Sometimes on single player, artifacts require you to wait close to them for a while before they spawn, but on this instant, with half the cave aggroed to me, I was in no position to continue waiting around. I made my way out of the cave, but ran out of grapples just one away from the end. I was about to run out of stamina, so I had to make this last jump. Uh, this is it, guys. Nope. Oh, one last jump. For safety! Oh, we made it. We made it. Uh, we, 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 it's alright, we go for Minty. Minty is going to be saved. <laughs> so, while we didn't manage to get any artifacts, as there are actually two in that cave, we did manage to get Minty back, so at least it wasn't all bad. While we returned to base with no artifacts, at base we were rewarded pretty soon after arriving with a nice 81 health mutation on the HP line, and then I began the levelling up process that I repeated about 100 times during this challenge. Now, baby direwolves, especially those of decent level, give quite good XP, so I simply killed all my poor wolf's babies for XP to level wolves up, which I thought may have been some use down the line. I wasn't ready to combine the stats yet on the melee and health line, but I did want to start breeding some wolves with slightly older stats, ready for the open world boss battles, which I thought would be considerably easier than the others, mainly because you can bring as many dinos as you want into them. Throughout day 34 to 36, I just continued to breed a variety of useful wolves, which included the long-awaited return of the oxygen dino, after the hero that was the oxygen raptor in my raptor 100 days video. As these decent wolves finished growing up, I uh, slaughtered some more babies, before claiming a true legend who makes it back for every video, Lightning McQueen, who would of course be our speed wolf. With so many wolves growing up and healing up back at base, I thought I would take some time off to kill this alpha carno. The moment it aggroed on me however, this micro raptor came out of absolutely nowhere and took me off the wolf. Safe to say, it didn't end well for me. Now, if you have been watching my channel for some time now, you will know that I absolutely cannot stand these things, and apparently they can't stand me either. They seem to absolutely have it out for me, and it doesn't matter where I am, they will find me and track me down. After dying to the Alpha Carno, I rather stupidly tried to make it back naked and hop back on my wolf. Safe to say, this didn't work out too well, and I paid the price for it. I did get twins on the 81 HP male by the way, so don't worry, I haven't just ran our male breeder down mid. I now had a good amount of wolves that were decently strong. However, one reason I was so eager to level them up early was because it would take them an absolute age to heal up, and without access to Deodons or Snow Owls, it was imperative that I gave my wolves plenty of time to heal. While I was coming towards the end of my mutation grind, I still wanted a few more, so an 83 health mutation would be where I stopped going for HP mutes. I then zoomed around the cave at breakneck speed, levelling up Lightning McQueen, 
who was rapidly becoming my favourite speed dino so far, as he was truly rapid. Across from base, I spotted another Alpha Kano who wanted a scrap, but then I went over and he bottled it and ran straight off the cliff instead. We then got our final melee mutation of the challenge at 75 melee, meaning our closing stats would be 83 health and 75 melee. It also came out looking pink, which was an extremely nice looking wolf. With the stats secured, I was eager to start taking on the easier world bosses, but yet still our old army of wolves were healing up. After waiting a couple of days, however, we were ready to go, and soon we teleported away in search of our first world boss, the Baylor, also known as the Giant Bee. Now, finding this cave was up there was one of the most difficult things I'd had to do so far in this challenge. Before starting the boss, I named all the wolves after my Twitch subscribers and followers, so if you do fancy seeing a dino named after you in the next video, why not come over to my Twitch and join the streams? On day 43, we started our first world boss. Let's go for it. All right, relax. We can. We can't physically kill you. I know. I just like to get everyone, include everyone. Right. Is it me or is the bee getting a bit melted? No, away from me. Oh my god, this bee. Is it just me or am I feeling quite optimistic about how much damage th these wolves are doing? They are absolutely shredding this thing. Oh my god. Look at the state of that. So to say that boss fight was a bit anticlimactic would be an understatement. After annihilating the bee with not so much as a scratch on the wolves, the Twitch chat and I decided we wanted something a bit more challenging. So we left for Asgard in search of the terminal to summon the two wolves, Skull and Haiti which would be our second world boss. We're not, we're not, we're not messing about. Owen, Owen, why is your, why is your wolf not? Okay, let's go for this one first. Get him. Ow. Get him. Uh, I'm not really sure how this is going so far. I think going well. Why are half of them not attacking though? And what is this? Why am I on fire? Oh my god. I think we're doing good. I'm pretty sure we're doing good. Okay, yeah, I think we're doing very good. Uh, Unga Bunga, I believe, was the final kill. Right. Is it going to be on the thing? Oh, we have to sort through it again. Okay. I would need these relics to summon the island bosses. So after grabbing them off the bodies of the victorious wolves, we brought them back to base, where they would get a well-deserved rest. The twin wolves had gone down pretty quickly, but not without a fight. And plenty of the wolves were pretty low on health after this fight. We would need them to be a full health and more for our final world boss. That more was in the form of our actual boss wolves, the best of the best, with our best HP and melee stats combined. I would breed 20 of these for what I hoped would be used for all the island bosses, as well as the final boss, should we get that far. But first, it was time to take it one step at a time. The final boss was in Jotunheim, the freezing cold biome in Fjordor, where prim fur armor and 100 fortitude isn't even enough to keep you alive. Not only is the biome deadly, but the bear boss represents one of the toughest challenges yet. The boss has 300k health, as well as reduced damage from almost all creatures. It also packs a nasty bite, and my plan was to bring all the top tier boss wolves and the soon to be retired ones and attempt to sheer brute force the boss with the sheer number of wolves that we had. Thus, between days 44 and 55, all I did was breed in level dire wolves, and of course give them some time to heal up. A wolf healing up from 45k health to 30k takes some time, which is one reason I was so eager to start breeding the best wolves as soon as possible. On day 52, they were all leveled, and we would just need a couple more days to heal up before we could take on the final boss. A couple of days later, we started up a stream to a nice welcome back from our old friend the Micro Raptor. How do you have such good luck? Uh, I don't know. Oh, I see an alpha. I see an alpha. Good stuff. I don't know, man. I, I don't always have good luck, I promise you. Uh... I did die to a level. 
You, you were saying about the good luck? <laughs> <laughs> the minute I go anywhere, these things, honestly, right? And then, they just, and then he just goes and chills over here. He just goes and chills over here. Unbelievable. After that entertainment to start the stream, to survive in Jotunheim, I would need some help. I was going to need a few things. First of all, I would need wyvern milk. So I unlocked net projectile as I plan to net them to make my life a little bit easier. Second of all, I thought it was best to make some med brews. As some of you may know, Rampy has a bad track record of not bringing enough med brews with him. I visited the snow biome quickly to get some polymer from these baby penguins before returning to base and using it to make a pump action shotgun, which I would use to aggro the wyverns, and then a harpoon, which I would use to net them. We were all ready to go get some wyvern milk, until the wyvern pit decided to be sexist and only spawn males. Eventually though, along the coast, I did manage to find our first female wyvern, and after it finally stopped aggroing on the now toasted Pelagornis out at sea, I managed to get him aggroed on me and netted him. This was rather a close call. Wyvern torpor goes down rapidly, so I had to make sure every arrow counted. With only one second left of the net, I decided to take the hit from him, to make sure that I could get one more arrow off at him. It appeared this arrow made all the difference, as he went out shortly after. After grabbing the first lot of milk, I decided I would need two, so the stage was set for Rampy to embarrass himself once more. Oh, it's a female, it's a female. We've seen, we have, sc we have scouted a female. Come here. Bang. Come on then. Should probably get on the wolf. Get on the wolf. That's it. Come here, let's not net the wolf. Let's not net the wolf. Easy. Easy. You're currently on the sixth most watched stream on Ark on Twitch. Oh, brilliant. Nice one. Not quite sure I've managed that, but uh, thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate you all a lot. Right, you're going to knock out. Oh my, I forgot. Can I knock, knock this out, please? Hello? Hang on, is it already knocked out? Um. Uh. Uh. Yeah. We, we don't talk about that. With the milk secured, I made up a couple of last med brews at base, and then named the new boss wolves after Twitch subs. I then of course realised that I was a couple of runestones off actually being able to summon this thing, so I dashed out to look for an alpha, and thankfully found an alpha Kano nearby. By the time I teleported to Jotunheim, it was now night time, which was absolutely fantastic, as it was now even more cold. Thankfully, the wyvern milk appeared to be doing the trick, and we entered the snow cave. After reaching the boss terminal, I realised that a good third of the wolves were missing. I was starting to run low on milk, so I had a choice of going without them, or teleporting back out and running back in to gather them. In the end, I opted to regather the wolves, which may turn out to be a wise choice. After teleporting out and making my way back to the entrance, I found we were missing about 10 wolves, so I was certainly glad that I'd chosen to go back for them. After rounding all the wolves up, it was finally time for what would hopefully be our final world boss. Who's ready? Dear Assault, it's boss time. That's all you need to know. Why can't I do a howl on this thing? Get in there, lads. Get him. I'm too scared to go near. Stop howling and hit and... Okay. Well, I'm howling now. I mean... I don't, I don't know how we're doing. We're doing good? Oh, God. Oh. It's going to be close, this. Oh, no. Come on, then. We need all the DPS we can get. Wolves are going to die. Wolves are dying in this fight, guys. 
Wolves are going to die in this fight. How many? I don't know. We have 45 seconds left of this pack buff. Is it stuck on it? Okay, that's good DPS. That's very good DPS right there. I think we're just about winning. I think we're just about winning. Right, I'm getting ready for the milk, by the way. The bad news is this, the, the alpha buff's about to wear off. That's not going to be good. Ooh, okay, milk. Go on, wolves. Oh, no. No! Lightning McQueen! The first one! Oh, it's heartbreaking. It's it's heartbreaking this in the boss. This thing is an absolute tank. Oh my word. I mean I think we're gonna do it guys. Uh what was that? He's just killed three at once. Oh I'm 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 flying. I am flying. No longer flying. More wolves dying. Oh man. There have been casualties. There have been many casualties. But I believe we have done it. We have done it. Okay. We will review the deaths and who died and make gravestones back at base. But now, we're just TPing out. Back at base, we paid homage to the heroes that have given us a shot at completing this challenge. We will always remember them. Also, by the way, Lightning McQueen wasn't actually meant to come into this fight. I'm sorry. While the wolves continued to heal at base, we brought out Oxy Wolf for his first outing, which didn't end great. With our wooden raft, uh, let me know if the gamma's too bright for you all, by the way. I'm kind of hoping it's not, but it might be. Yeah, I think Fjord was a great map. Uh, all right. Well, that's a good start to the stream. Very, very nice. To activate the dragon fight, I would need one giga heart. There was actually one located near my base, which was great, but I would have to work out how to kill it. I did contemplate sending the wolf army at it, but I decided I couldn't exactly afford to lose the health on the wolves, or worse still, the wolves themselves. So that left me with only one option left, drowning it. The problem with drowning it was that the Fjordor ocean creatures were feeling pretty bold on this day, and all wanted a slice of giga pie. Thus, in order to guarantee that I got his heart, I made a bold decision. I didn't mean it! I didn't mean it! Right, hang on, maybe we can harvest him. Maybe we can harvest him. Oh shit. I need to drop I need to drop stuff. Can we harvest let's harvest the giga. Give me the giga heart. Give me the giga heart. Come on. I want it. Right, we're all in now. We're all in. Give me the giga heart. Me, me. We got it! We got it! Right. Might be in pro might be in some trouble there. Might be in some real trouble there. Didn't mean to do that. Nope. Uh, can we get back on the raft? What's the, what's the thoughts? I'm leaning towards no. I'd obviously underestimated the power of Oxywolf, as not only did he help himself to the Giga Heart, but he also took out the pack of Megalodons and made the Alpha swim away in sheer fear. Surely you can't help an Alpha Megalodon. Oh my word, you actually can. Okay. Thank you, Ale. That, that was that was the big W play, that. That was a big W play. <laughs> Easy. Oh, look. 
Uh, did you see that play? We just jumped off the... Unbelievable. With Oxy Wolf having a great first outing, I thought it was only fair we continued with him, and thus I went after our next artifact, which has an underwater entrance located off the coast of Lava Island. We managed to make it into the cave fine, and everything was going well. Until it wasn't. Oh yeah, that's true. We do not want to get rabies. Very good point. Let's make a those. Yeah, we don't want those either. Oh, no. Oh. Can he pick me? Can he pick the dire wolf up? Yeah. 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 Yeah, he can. Uh. I returned to the cave of another wolf, as I soon realised you don't actually need exceptional oxygen to make the swim, but just as I loaded in this cave, we sadly lost another hero. This was becoming all too common. I then played a game of red light green light with a sleeping megalo, which had just crushed my hopes and dreams, and thankfully I made it through to the next round. The rest of the cave was actually pretty simple, and we soon reached the artifact of the cunning. The reason that I'd sounded out the cunning artifact in particular is because it was actually the last artifact that we needed to do the dragon. Now, normally I would probably do the dragon last, but as we were so close, I thought we could arguably try the hardest island boss first. If we were successful, I was confident that we could get through to the final round. I would, however, still need to collect the remaining tributes to summon the beta dragon. So shortly after day 70, I set about doing this. By far the biggest difficulty I had doing this was farming the UT lungs. Now, of course, when you aren't looking for a specific creature in Ark, you find it all over the place. And when you are looking for something, you never find it. That's just how the game always is. But this was a new level in particular. I did find myself a first duty, but ran into a few issues with the second one. Uh, I don't really want to fight that right now. You know, I, I'd, I'd, I'd kill it, but I don't really want to lose the health. Oh, uh, why is, why is it spawned an alpha car no? Right, well, we found another UT. Uh-oh. Let's just take on one at a time. We don't want to get feared when there's an alpha car no around, all right? Yeah, of course. Oh, no, the UT's there. Yeah, oh, we're in trouble. We're in big trouble. I am in, in big trouble. In big trouble. And I don't want to be in big trouble. I am in big trouble. Oh, oh no. Like, Rampy's in really big trouble. Like, like I, I cannot describe the trouble that Rampy is in right now. Rampy's dead. Rampy's dead. Rampy's dead. Rampy's dead. So, after that series of unfortunate events, I made my way back for New Wolf and gave the UT a serious lesson. That, however, was where the fun ended. After searching for another 40 minutes or so, I couldn't find another UT at all, so instead, I decided to go for a swim. Oh, and also to get some Basilo Blubber which I needed for the dragon. Thankfully, Blubber does drop in twos, so this was a much more straightforward process than the UTs, even if the surrounding mantas were a bit annoying at times. After the Basilos, I had one more water creature to go, so I prepared another wolf and jumped in after it. Right, two so, come on. Boys, there's a two so, there's a two so. No! Why? Why are you 145? And why is everything in the whole water just aggroed on me the moment I got in? Do you see the range on those? What is... Oh my... Uh... Uh... Guys, I think we're in trouble. I think we're in real trouble there. Uh, thank you so much for the tip, Waffles. I appreciate it, man. Uh, why? What just happened? I just jumped in the water and everything in the planet just aggroed on me. Look at the state of this. I eventually managed to make what I can only describe as the great escape, when an Alpha Megalodon gave me a nice boost back onto the raft at the perfect time. Quite how I'd gotten out of that alive, I wasn't really sure. Anyway, it was clear that I would need a new plan. So later that day, I returned with not one, not two, but three wolves to try and deal with the mobs of creatures in the water. We'd once again found the 145 Tuso, and things seemed to be going up, until he blinded me, and I wasn't able to see a single thing. It's safe to say that 145 Tuso was never seen again. Thankfully, in the time that I'd been away, another lower level Tuso had actually spawned, and he managed to run himself right into a wall, like the smart lad that he is. So we finally managed to get our hands on the Tuso tentacles that we needed. After that nice break with the fishies, I was once more ready to return to the thankless task of searching for UTs. This actually went a little better, and after about an hour of searching all the spawn points, I'd finally found the UTs. 
Of course, during the rest of this challenge, I would run into countless UTs, now that I wasn't looking for them, but that was to be expected. After organising all the wolves and sorting out the best of the lot, we teleported back to Vardalam West, where the Dragon Terminal can be found nearby. We reached the Dragon Terminal with all the tributes in hand, and we were ready to take on our first island boss. We had to succeed, or this challenge would probably be over. Oh, this is scary. Why can't I howl? Oh, it's not a pack leader, is it? Okay, that's not ideal. Uh, I don't know if that counts. Maybe counts, I don't know. Uh, is the dragon gonna, like, land? You fancy landing anytime soon? Yeah, I'm just watching out for those fireballs, honestly. I do a... I do a pot... Ow. No, 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 no. Ooh. Looks a bit nasty, that. I don't know what... Right, right, passive, lads. Come on. Shoot it. I've got nothing to shoot it with. All right. right honestly. Ow. Ooh. Oh, that looked... How did I take damage from that fireball? Right, is he going to land? Instead of just... Right, he's landing, he's landing, he's landing. Oh, he's getting up again. Whoa. Whoa. No, no, no. No, 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 no. You over here. Okay, now land, now land, now land. Come on, dragon. He's taking the mech a bit here, isn't he? Everyone in on him. Oh, no. Ooh. Why are they howling? Just hit him. Uh... Okay. Okay, now stop howling and hit the dragon. Uh, I mean, he's going down pretty fast now. We're all hitting him. Why are they all howling? Just hit him. Oh, I don't know about this. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's fine now. I don't think he's hitting them. I don't think he can... No, it's fine. Like, once they get underneath his legs, he just can't hit them. I'm pretty sure he's doing no damage to any of these walls. No, he's, he's not. Hello, guys. Welcome to the stream. Well... Uh, that wasn't too bad, was it? Easy claps for the direwolves. Why is my direwolf currently floating in the air? Oh, I think he's stuck in. Oh, right. Oh, I see. Look, right. Who are the cowards? Who are they? Who are the cowards? Right. Lunamist, Enchanting, Bruto, and Owen. Owen, you, you guys are dead to me. Absolutely dead to me. Get out. Get out. You're not coming back to base. You're not coming back. Absolute cowards. Absolute cowards. Following on from the success at the dragon fights, we were now on day 78, and I'd finally got around to making some cryos. With cryos in hand, I returned to the lava cave, which is the one I had to run out of before. There are two artifacts in this cave, the clever and the pack. The clever can be located to the right of the cave, which is where I started. With a wolf on hand, this cave was a breeze second time round. After successfully grappling over to the pack side of the cave, I was pleased to see that this time, the artifact had actually decided to spawn for me. Still on the hunt for artifacts, I went in search of the hunter, where I ran into an old friend. I can only assume this wolf had been lost when I searched for the Baylor cave earlier in the challenge, so I thought I may as well bring him along for the ride this time around. This cave has two entrances, but the one I took is easier to get to by wolf, and it has you drop into a pool of piranhas. Remember earlier when I said that Wildcard just loves these things? I may have used the poor spare wolf to test the waters a bit, but I soon dropped in myself. Inside the cave, I was absolutely thrilled to see that my old mates the Megalosauruses had made an appearance, and despite my best efforts to avoid them, it wasn't long before this cave descended into pure chaos. Oh, oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Where have the Megalos come from? Get him! Get him, Sankey! 
Oh, what a hero. After being bailed out by my wolves, I grappled up and retrieved the artifact of the hunter. The last cave that I would have to do for the broodmother artifacts also required some swimming. Really not sure what it is with this map and swimming entrances to caves, but there we go. To get to the actual cave, you have to grapple up, which has made this cave very popular in the PvP scene already, and you can absolutely see why. In the next section of this cave, I was not so pleased to see that the demon bats, which had tried to carry my last wolf onto the sunset, were back. In the end, I had no choice but to sprint past them, and thankfully I managed to do this, before they picked me and my wolf up. The last section of this cave involves a puzzle. In the puzzle, you have to match the colours to the numbers, which can be found on the wall, or objects nearby. You then press the colours in order to open a gateway to the next section. I'd actually done this puzzle before on the modded Fjordor version, but thankfully I knew what I was doing this time around, which made it a lot easier. This cave is also filled with all sorts of booby traps such as spikes that come up from the floor, and random trank arrows which shoot out of the wall, as well as the dragger from Skyrim I believe, although it appears if you bring a wolf down here, they don't aggro. After repeating the same concept in the second section of the cave, it opened a door, which led to the hunter artifact. With all the artifacts collected, I still needed to grab a couple of tributes, so I had to raft over with a wolf to the swamp island where I farmed up some titan aboa venom and some sarco skins. I also managed to get some leeches on me, so quickly I had to almost burn myself to death on the fire back at base to remove them. With all the artifacts and tributes collected, and the wolf army successfully healed from the dragon fight, on day 80 we went in search of the broodmother cave. After successfully finding the cave after a short search, and getting the wolves ready, we activated the beta broodmother. Here's how it went. Apparently done. There we go. Get him, boys. Go on, wolves. Uh, why, why are they howling again? Why are they howling again? Uh, I'm liking the early signs. I am liking the early signs. Very much liking the early signs. Wolves do damage, man. Wolves do damage. Wow. Okay. Honestly, man, like... Maybe we should have done Alpha. Maybe we should have done Alpha. With two out of three island bosses completed, and five out of seven Fjordor bosses completed, we were getting towards the final stages of this challenge. At base, I repaired my set of scuba, as I would need to venture into the Swamp Cave, which houses the Artifact of the Brute. This cave is similar to the Island Swamp Cave, where you need a gas mask, scuba set, or scuba and ghillie combo to keep you alive. I was given a fright at the entrance where I was greeted by my old friend the Desmondus, and then I'm pretty sure this one spawned out of the mesh to try and ruin my day. But not even the bats could stop us as we stormed through the rest of the cave and grappled up to the brute artifact where I claimed my prize. Now, the last artifact of this challenge. This was probably one of the hardest challenges I had to face on this 100 day journey. I'd done this cave before, so I knew it was going to be difficult and intentionally left it till last. Nevertheless, we entered the snow biome with hope. We had Werecat the O2 Wolf, and we had a dream. I put on my full scuba set to give me the insulation boost, and swam down towards the cave. Right, I think we now we, we need to throw the wolf out here. Thank you, Lucky, uh, on my way for the follow. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Guys. Guys, we've, we've, had a, we've had a bad moment. Guys, we've had a very bad moment. We've done a bad thing. We've done a very bad thing. Oh no. <laughs> After making it back to the surface, I was greeted by the charming message that my poor O2 workout wolf was now no more. So, what do we do when the chips are down? Why, we level another poor wolf and oxygen to sacrifice, of course. With Hypercrow the wolf thrown out and ready to, uh, swim, we had another shot at the cave. Here, Megadon 180. We can deal with that. Oh, no, no, no. Die, 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 die. Why aren't you getting hit? Why aren't you getting hit, you stupid thing? Oh, oh dear. Uh, I'm not going to lie, guys. I'm not feeling very optimistic right now about our chances. But we keep on going.
we keep going. Oh dear. Uh... So yes, this cave is turning out to be a significant issue. I ended up being chased right out of this cave by an eel on this attempt, and for some reason this still didn't be enough to stop me, and I just kept continuing to come back with new wolves and thinking that something was going to change. Quite frankly, I blame the stream chat, who were clearly having a great time watching. After I eventually came to terms with the realisation that this cave wasn't exactly wolf friendly, I decided to bite the bullet and make a mind wipe tonic. I did this as if I levelled oxygen, my speed in the water would increase, so after levelling my character to a whopping 520 oxygen, I was ready to zoom past this cave. One error I did make was forgetting to level weight until the last minute, and ending up with 150 weight. I would no longer be able to whale for the rest of this challenge. However, the strategy did indeed work, as I was absolutely rapid now in the water. Not even the eels could catch me. The biggest concern I had, however, that was when I reached the end of the cave that the artifact wouldn't have spawned. But thankfully, all my sacrifices had clearly been worth it, as the artifact of the devourer was there and waiting. With the artifacts retrieved, I would first have the fun task of retrieving all the tributes. So I first had to kill enough Ferrazinos to get the Fairy Claws, followed by Phylas, which were actually pretty easy, and lastly the worst one, the Spinos, which only drop one sail and can spawn in the most random of places. After grabbing all those tributes, however, we returned to the Aberration Cave, which I briefly explored earlier and activated the Beta Megapithecus. Oh, where's Monkey? Right, there he is. Right, do we go to him? Right, we're still... F okay, we're freezing. Go. 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 We're freezing. Come on, wolves. Quickly. Get him, wolves. Oh, dear. This is going to be a race of Rampy's HP versus the wolves. Okay, I, th I think I think we're gonna win. Oh, crazy damage from the wolves, man! Whoa. Wolves too strong, and half of them aren't even attacking him. Imagine if they actually all attacked him, and we actually had twenty of them. All right, easy dub, easy dub, easy dub, easy dub. We only had one fight to go now, and it would be our hardest yet, but also most unknown one yet. I had never fought the final boss before, and hadn't even seen much content on it either. I did, however, guess that it was going to be very cold in that boss arena, so I chose the wise choice of getting some wyvern milk before taking on the boss. I then made a couple of med brews and teleported us to Asgard, where you can find the red obelisk and activate the boss fight. The only issue I had, however, was that these wolves were not healed yet from the monkey, so I had to sit around for a few days and wait for time to pass, while I did a Q&A with my stream chat. When the wolves had finally healed, the milk had spoiled, so I had to go all the way back to Lava Island to get fresh milk. I did accomplish this in a mighty impressive 1 minute and 20 seconds, which both the chat and I agreed was a Guinness World Record worthy. With the milk secured, we were now finally ready for the final boss of this 100 day right, challenge. Guys. This is it. The final boss of 100 days of Fjordor. Let's get it. All right. Wyvern milk drank. Raw meat dropped. Let's go. So I, I think he does like a long range attack. Ow. Oh no. I'm keeping my distance. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Right. Now, you might understandably be a bit confused to see me standing back in the same spot, but after consulting the chat, they decided I should roll back to an earlier save, which was just after we had beaten the monkey and have another go. I'd clearly failed at the last hurdle, but I think we can all agree that the wolves deserve a better send-off, and a chance of victory at least. 
Were they up to the task, however? Here is the real final battle of my 100 Days of Fjordal. All right. Right, I've got Flak on this time, and I've also mined, but we have 700 health. Okay. Um, come on, Wolves. I right, see so he's currently not moving. Okay, now he's aggroed on me. Okay. Uh, ow. I need to get away from his attack. No, 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 he's about to do the attack. He's about to do the attack. No, 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 no. There's no way that can reach me, right, by the way. Okay, yep. Yeah. Is it... What's he, what's he attacking? Oh, where's the direwolves? Uh, guys, I think the direwolves are all split up. Get him! I'll take out the Fenris. I I'll handle these boys. I'll handle these boys. If you can't tell, by the way, I'm super scared of him. Get him! Get the main one, got lads. Okay, we've sent, we've sent the direwolf army in. Hey, is it me or are we doing alright? Okay, but... The army are in. Go on, lads. It is a good start so far. It is a good start. Just don't die. I've just got to chill over here. There's nothing I can do. The damage is good, yeah. But is it me or are they doing less? Than... Wait, what are the wolves doing? Is it me or are they doing a lot less now? All right, he's halfway. How are the wolves doing? The wolves are like... I think we're winning this, you know? I don't know what that... That's... Go on, boys. Let's get it. Don't be shy. I get cl I'm not getting anywhere near this thing. Oh, no. He's calling in the Fenrir army. Oh, no. The deaths have begun. Come on, come on, wolves. Come on, wolves. Oh, he's coming for me. Oh, no. He's... Bu oh, no. Oh, come on. No, this is not good. Oh, it's going to be close. AZK left. Oh, no. No, no, is that for me? Oh, guys, it's so... Oh, no. 30k. Oh, no. The last wolves. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Ah! I'm going in. I'm going in. I'm going in. I'm going in. Die. Die. Please. Yes. We've done it. Oh. What an ending. What an ending. Oh. Oh my. Is, is that two wolves left? Camlop, Camlopsel, I have no idea if you're here, but you're a hero. Two. He survives with 6k HP. Thank you all so much for watching my 100 days of Fjordor journey. I had an absolute blast streaming this one over on Twitch for so many of you, so if you do want to come and join the streams over there, I'd really love to have you. Our next challenge is 100 days in aberration. Perhaps you can guess the creature in the comments below. If you did enjoy, please remember to do leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, please do take care of yourself, stay safe, and I'll see you in another four to five weeks. Bye-bye.